What up, Internet? Since I've upgraded to an ultra-wide monitor, several people have asked me, Positronic, how do you have OBS set up for Twitch streaming all of those games that you play? I typically stream both 21.9 supported and 16.9 aspect ratio games, and I swap between them very frequently, so I thought I'd put together this quick tutorial video to outline a few of the methods I've utilized that have worked very well for me. It's important to mention before we get into this that your optimal configuration will likely be different depending on the hardware that you're running and the desired results that you're looking for. But hopefully this guide will give you a starting point and some info on where to start to tweak your setup as it can be a lengthy process. Before we jump in, here's a list of the hardware I currently use to stream for reference. Also note that I stream from my gaming PC only and I'm not using a separate streaming rig. My hardware specs are as follows. I have an Intel Core i7-8700K, I have 32 gigs of G-Skill RAM, and I'm using an NVIDIA 1070 Ti graphics card. On the software side of things, uh, pretty simple, I'm using Win 10 Pro and Streamlabs OBS to do the streaming. The predominant output for Twitch streams is typically a 16:9 aspect ratio at 720 or 1080 vertical resolution. So if you're streaming on an ultra-wide 21:9 ratio, you'll definitely be seeing those black bars on top and bottom of your game capture. The foundation of adapting your stream for this will begin at your OBS video config, so let's get into the base canvas settings. You've got a couple of options here. You can set your base canvas to your native 3440 by 1440 and then downscale the resolution to a lower setting that will look appropriate in the formats I just discussed. Or you can make the base canvas one of the preferred 720 or 1080p resolutions. Personally, I've spent several months streaming at both these configurations with very little issue and in the end it will depend on what your goals for your stream will be as they both have pros and cons which I'll go over in the following segments. When I first started streaming using an ultra-wide monitor, I had a base canvas at the native 3440 by 1440 resolution. I've then downscaled that to 1720 by 720. Using this setting ensured that the output you see on my Twitch channel is not stretched or compressed and it would be 720p so a very large audience could view it without difficulty on most devices and connection speeds. This works extremely well if you don't want to run a bunch of custom overlays in the frame and you just want to set it and forget it with very minimal quality loss. You have to keep in mind, however, using this downscaled output still gives your viewers the black bars on the top and the bottom of the game view, and if you're streaming a game that does not support a 21.9 resolution, your channel may have even more black space on either side of the game, which, for some, may not be an agreeable viewing experience. I'll put an example in the description of this video showing a highlight on my Twitch channel using this downscaled configuration in a Final Fantasy XIV encounter at the highest in-game settings for reference. Our next option is using a base canvas at a 16.9 HD resolution. I'm a pretty avid MMO player and most games in that genre will support ultra-wide resolutions, but I also frequently pick up indie games that do not really support that kind of huge wide girth. After a while, it became a bit cumbersome to set up and do base resolution and scene swaps to accommodate this when I wanted to stream just a 16.9 only game. This is what led me to change all of my scenes up while adding some other features to my channel that I'd really been wanting to check out. To do this, I set up a base canvas of 1920 by 1080 which also let me up the vertical res on my stream to 1080 in the process. I handcuffed that to matching the output resolution at 1920 by 1080 which in turn forced me to completely redesign the various scenes I had at OBS. Using this configuration, I was able to use the black bar space to start deploying overlays and other channel info I would have normally displayed within the frame of the active game, as well as seamlessly swap between ultra-wide and other supported outputs. Those obvious benefits aside, this did require quite a bit more effort and time to set up each scene as overlays and sizing, alignment, all of these things need to be set up precisely. One of the last hurdles you'll face will be to fine tune the actual output to Twitch. Much like the video settings, you have some options here depending on your setup and your desired results. Heading over to the output and advanced settings, one of the first things you'll notice is the settings for encoder. Your two options are to use your video card hardware encoder or use the software X264 encoder which will then put the burden on your CPU. NVENC or NVENC is the encoder for NVIDIA cards and there's also an AMD equivalent. Which of these you use will depend on your PC. I've used the NVENC encoder for years with very little issue even while simultaneously using Shadowplay to record my gameplay. 
However, recently I've begun using the software X264 encoder as my CPU typically runs at a pretty low utilization while I'm gaming. The main goal when setting up the stream output is to avoid drop frames with the quality output levels that you desire. And let me tell you, chasing that dream can take a lot of tweaking depending on your hardware as there are a lot of variables involved. So make sure you take your time to troubleshoot and refine those settings. Another one of those variables is the output bit rate of your stream to the provider. This will need to be tuned depending on your PC and your upload speed. But a good start I've found is to begin around 2500 to 3000 at 60 frames per second and then you start bumping that up as you continue to dial in the best settings for your streaming environment. I will also link the recommended resolution and bitrate settings from the official Twitch page in the description below that will provide you some guidelines on the ceilings for those settings. Generally, if your connection and or PC are being bogged down at all, you can ease the bitrate back or CPU usage setting until you find a stabilized and smooth output and a frames per second that looks good to you. Now that we've gone over the basics, I'll show you a few examples of scenes I've set up with these various configurations that exhibit several different ways I've utilized this in OBS for my Twitch channel. Alright guys and gals, hopefully this tutorial has been helpful in some way, so let me know in the comments if there are related questions or stop on by my Twitch channel linked in the border above to see the dream in action.